So far, we've talked about probability, which is quantifying uncertainty, and it gives you a decimal or a percentage that corresponds with that uncertainty. Well, now we're going to switch to odds. And what odds do is they help us to work with whole numbers rather than decimals, which can kind of help people understand their odds a little bit more. So let's jump into it and discuss what are odds. Odds in favor of an event is the ratio of the probability that the event will happen to the probability that the event will not happen. So essentially you're comparing how many ways it can occur to how many ways it can't happen. Okay, so how can it, how can't it? So you kind of go, are there more ways that it can occur than it can occur? Then you would be leaning towards maybe doing that event. Like, um, I know the lottery is insane. There's some that's like one in 300 million. That means for every one will winner, there's 300 million losers. So you would say your odds are not very good there, okay? That one person, you have to be pretty lucky, which is different than probability, right? So what are the odds that a randomly chosen day of the week is Sunday? Well, you'd have to go ahead and look at how many days are Sunday, there's only one, right? So that would be your first number. And then how many numbers are not Sunday would be your second answer. Well, there's six other numbers that would not be Sunday. So one, two, six. So some notes on odds. The two numbers should add up to the total number of outcomes. So you see one plus six adds up to the total number of days of the week, which is seven. Um, and this will be happening for all odds. So it's a good way to double check yourself. Odds will also always be whole numbers. You will not have any decimals, which is nice because you don't really have to do any calculations besides subtracting. So pretty nice overall. So one to six. If you can, you always want to reduce. So for example, if you had two to six, maybe we were looking at the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, um, two to six, notice that both of these numbers are divisible by two. That means you can reduce by dividing each of these numbers by two to give you one, two, three. So you're just reducing and saying, for every one winner, there's three losers. That's essentially what you're saying there. Let's go ahead and do some odds with rolling two dice. So I like to think of this, I'm a huge Monopoly buff. I love Monopoly, big surprise, right? And when you're playing with that Monopoly, you're rolling two dice. These are all the different outcomes of rolling two dice. In fact, there's 36 total different outcomes. So snake eyes, one, one, one and two, one and three, so on and so forth, five and four, six and five, so on and so forth. Keeps going. Uh, but we want to know the odds. So remember, it's always odds in favor of that event to odds of it not happening. So the ro you roll doubles is the first event that we need to find the odds for. So the first number is how many ways can this happen? So how many ways are there to roll doubles? Doubles are the same number, so we're just going to go in here and grab those doubles. Go down the line here. These are all the doubles, six, six, five, four. Oh, there, I see there's an error here. This should be a five, six, sorry. That one has a little error. But anyway, six, six, five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, and one, one. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six six ways to roll a double. And since we're doing odds, we need to find the number of ways to not roll a double. Well, that would be everything else. So I can just take the total, which is 36, subtract off that original number, six, 
to find there are 30 ways to not roll doubles. So for anybody that plays Monopoly, 30 ways to not get out of jail. The next event I changed slightly is the sum of the two dice is five. So what this is saying is that the sum of the two dice, which is when I add the two dice together, I need to get five. So let's go over here to our 36 events and pick which of these add to five. So three and two are gonna work. Two and three, four and one. Okay, that looks like about it for those that are gonna add up to five. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four possibilities. So that's the first number. The second number is how many possibilities or outcomes that do not add up to five. Well, that's everything else, right? So again, we can just take the total, which is 36, and subtract off how many outcomes we have here, which is four, which means there's 32 dice that do not add up to five. Okay, now this can be reduced four and 32. Both of these are divisible by four. Okay, so we're just going to divide each of these by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 32 divided by 4 is 8. So 1 in 8, for every 1 roll that is a 5, there's 8 rolls that are not 5. Okay, let's do the last one. It says at least one of the dice is a 4. So let's clean up this board real quick. So we're gonna look here and we're gonna say, okay, at least one, so one or more, when it says at least, so one or more has to be greater, or has to be, has to contain a four. So let's look here. This one contains a four, this one contains a four, 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 four. You're missing any? Mm, it looks like this one's a four, this one has a four, that one has a four. At least one four, yep. Okay, looks like we've got everyone thing. How many are there? It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it looks like eleven ways to get a dice that has a four on it. How many ways to not get a dice with a four on it? Well, you could go ahead and count everything that's not circle, or you can just take the total is 36 and subtract off how many outcomes fit that situation. So 36 minus 11 is going to be 25. And this does not reduce because 11 is a prime number. So we just leave it for every 11 rolls that contain at least a four, there's 25 that don't. Okay. The only thing left is a couple more problems and then a nice little conclusion. So Let's find the odds of an event with a probability of two-fifths. So we want to compare this idea of probability and odds. That's the hardest part. So if your probability equals two-fifths, the top number is the number of ways for the event can occur. The bottom number is the total possibilities. So we need to find the odds. So the first number in odds is how many ways the event can occur. So how many ways can this event occur? Well, that's just the top number, two. Now the second number is how many ways can the event not occur? We have the total number of outcomes and the top number is the total number of outcomes for that specific event. How are we gonna figure out that last number? What did we do last in the last example? We took the total, right, which is five, and we just subtracted off the outcomes that fit that event. So five minus two is three. So for every two wins, there's three losses. And notice that it does add up to the total. Two plus three gives me five, which is great. Now the last one we want as example is gonna be Steve Nash is one of the most accurate free throw shooters in NBA and shoots free throws with a probability of 90%. Woo, pretty high. I really don't know that much about basketball, big surprise. 
but there is a stat for you, 90%. What are the odds? Paying attention and reading carefully, right? What are the odds that he will throw a, will hit a free throw? Well, first thing we want to do is figure out the probability. The probability is 90%. Well, 90% can be written as 90 over 100, which reduces, you can divide the top and bottom by 10, and it reduces to 9 over 10. It also can be written as 0.9. Just move that decimal back to get the decimal amount. So in the previous section in probability, we moved it to the right to turn it into a percent. To get it back to a decimal, we just do the opposite and move it to the left two spots to turn it back into a decimal. Okay, so nine tenths. So the odds, same thing, the top number represents the number of ways the event can occur. So that always comes first. And then the second number is the number of ways it cannot occur. So this is the total on the bottom. So how do we figure out this number? We have to take the total and subtract how many fit the event. So if he shoots nine free throws, how many is he going to miss? Only one. Pretty good odds, right? Pretty good odds that he's going to hit that free throw. Okay, so that summarizes your odds. Be very careful not to confuse your odds and your probability, and be very careful on your homework to note whether it states find the probability or find the odds. You're looking for two different things here. They're related, but they're not identical. So good luck and email me with any questions you may have.